I'm Caesar Bakes, and this is my Crosshair 5 Formula Z. Now, I do believe this is a newer revision of the Formula Z board because, from what I've seen in the older pictures and the stock pictures on the uh, Watercool website, it shows all of these capacitors lined up right here, which would make sense as to why this thing was designed with a straight piece right here instead of a notch on it for this capacitor. Now basically what I'm going to do is if you have a newer revision of the Formula Z like mine, I'm going to show you what's the easiest way that I found at least to modify this block to fit this capacitor right here. Now if you noticed I have two bolts right here. I have them upside down so they're facing this way through the bottom of the board. Now what I did was I just very loosely tightened a screw on the bottom right here and what I would do is I'd take another screw on the top like that, tighten it up a little bit, and do that for both of those and just let this block rest on top of here like so. You'll find that you're going to have enough space that this capacitor right here it'll more or less sit on there and you'll have a good idea of where your mounting holes are. So then, once you have that, what you want to do is you just want to mark off the point on top of the block where you're going to need to remove the metal from so you know how much you're going to need to drill out. So let's say it covered this much from here to here. What you need to do is you just need to fill that in a real little bit like so. And that way you know how much metal you're going to need to remove from this thing. Now when I originally did this, I did not do that. And I had just had it sitting kind of on top like so. And I had eyeballed where the holes were. And that's why this looks so sloppy like that. Now, when you go to remove the metal... The diameter of this cap is roughly about 19 ths so I had started with a 5 16th drill bit. And obviously I was not on center where I should be when I started drilling through it. And it's also very important to note that this plate right here, this vanity plate, you want to take this off before you try and drill through it because you are going to need to remove a real little bit of metal on this vanity plate right here, right where my finger is at. So once you have your hole drilled through here, you're still going to have the vanity plate off of this. You want to put it on the board, like so. Again, leave these two studs on, so that way you can test fit it and make sure that everything lines up to where it's supposed to be. Now you don't want to have it too close to this capacitor because you really don't want any excess heat on any of these caps. Even though, in theory, they should be rated for it, well, the last thing you want is a solid cap design like that to fail because those can be a real pain in the ass to troubleshoot later on down the road. Once you have it drilled through and you've gotten everything all uh, mocked up and ready to go, what you want to do after that is you want to take this plate right here, bolt it back on, and you're going to need to go in here with a sanding barrel or a grinding barrel on a Dremel something like that. You're going to need to remove just a real little bit of metal so you can get just that real little bit of a notch right there. So that way when you put this block on here, it'll clear with the vanity plate and you should be good to go after that. You can always throw these things on here too, even though they're really not going to do anything except just maybe agitate you when you look at them because they're not straight. I know mine do. But Besides that, that's all you really have to do to get this thing set up. Another important thing to note is when you're installing this, you're probably going to find that it's going to be real tough to find any kind of fitting to go from here to here. And that was one of my biggest complaints with this block, was there was no supplied fitting for this particular bridge. And I thought it was kind of ridiculous that they would do something like that. So this is a 180 degree barrow and it's, um, I think it's like a two, three, four, five, six. This might be like a six section rotary fitting. 
something like that. And then I had to use a male to male on this end to get it all connected. And to me, that just seems like it's a really needless design, but it was the only way I could really get the thing to fit. So that's pretty much what you need to know if you wanna install one of these blocks on a Crosshair 5 Formula Z. Not that I feel many people are going to be using this board for much longer now that uh, Ryzen, Risen, whatever the hell they're calling it now, K12, Zen. Now that that's out, I don't think these things are going to be around for too much longer, but hey, if you're unfortunate enough to buy one of these boards and buy one of these blocks and then realize, oh shit, this isn't going to fit, this is uh, pretty much the solution that you're going to have to use to get it to work. Unless you just want to take a hacksaw or a Dremel or something like that and just chop this piece right here and then use the south bridge block on the north bridge. And if you're doing something like serious overclocking, I can really see how that would be more beneficial for you than having a water block on the south bridge. Or if you're using something like a tri-fire or a three-way SLI setup. But that's uh, a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm doing here.